Iburu, Iboya, Ebuche, it's everybody in Cyberland. It's your favorite Bawalao. At least I hope so. Homo don dileke. Hey, so today and passing on to tomorrow. Tomorrow marks October 4th. And what does that mean? Well, October 4th, within the Afro Cubano faith, because of the synchronization of Orula with San Francisco de Assisi, we have a feast day for Orula. Now, I've said this before in many of my videos, it doesn't matter if I'm wearing green or red, or green and yellow, Orula, Orumila, is Orula. Ifa is Ifa. Abawalau is Abawalau. So it doesn't necessarily matter to what extent do you want to give honor to the divinities. But today, I want to focus on Orula. Why Orula? Well, as a Abawalau, we use Orula as a mouthpiece. Because Orula is our way of receiving the messages of Ifa. <clears throat> Why is that important? Well, it's important to give honor to him because it is his words, it is his wisdom that is giving us the ability to understand our spiritual journey, to understand where we are going, our enlightenment, our righteousness, because that is important to understand. There's a lot of faiths that talk about people that are typically sleeping within their spiritual self. Uh, we have a lot of faiths that believe that there's only a small percentage of the world that is truly entombed when we talk about divinities and when we talk about being spiritual. And to a certain extent, there's a truth to that. Because a lot of times we do not understand who we are, what we are, and what are we destined for. Within the philosophies of Ifa, the philosophies on how Olodumari, God, created the universe itself, we have Orumila. We have the witness to the creation of the universe. All great things require a witness, as stated in the philosophy of Ifa. That is what Olodumari mentioned to Orula, which allowed him to continue to see what it was he was building. <clears throat> for that reason, Orumila is very important for us to understand who he is. Because he's the one that's going to guide us to where we need to go. With that said, <clears throat> a couple of things to remember about Orula. Things to remember on his feast day, which is October 4th again. Is that one, Orula is not Ifa. Two, when we interpret Ifa through Orula, Bawalaos, who are consecrated through the ceremonies of Ifa, we understand that there's 256 Odums. 16 Olodum, which are the, the, the basic principles, right? Because 16 times 16 is where we get the 256. <clears throat> More importantly, what that allows us to do when we communicate with Orula, Orula provides our life spiritual balance. What do we do next? And how do we communicate with the things that may be blocking or creating barriers to us? Some of the other things that you need to understand is uh, the tools. Orula is a divinity that at the end of the day we use through Babalaos to get to Ifa in order to build somewhat of an umbrella to capture what it is that we need to do next. How do we fix the problems that we have? Why do I think that's important for you to understand? Because a lot of times Orumila at the end of the day, is going to give us answers. Those answers are through a intricate spider web of things, tools that Orula uses, whether it's inquines, whether it's ecoles, whether it's the tablero, the tablet of Ifa, um, whether it's the ibos. Everything has a story. Everything has a connection. And what Orula has, what makes him valuable is that he has a pack with all these things that have a spirit and a connection to life. 
a spirit in connection to mankind. That is how we begin to get into somewhat of a spiritual balance. That's what Arula offers us. That's why it's important to ensure that you are receiving, at the end of the day, your consultations, you're receiving your Awofaka or Ikofa, which is considered Mano de Orula. Um, and we begin to start to unravel some of those spiritual uh, challenges you may be having in order to get you in the right place where you need to go. Orula and his tools begin to interpret not, not only what you need, but it begins to tap into your Ori, begins to tap into who is the guardian Orisha that is guiding you? How do we get through these challenges? That's what Orula offers you. That's what Orula does for mankind. Orula is what we like to say in 2020. We have a profession of genetic scientists. Orula is like a genetic scientist. Bawalaos have to study profusely. I mean, I could not even tell you the amount of hours I have put in to studying Ifa and how to interpret Ifa in order for the betterment of mankind. I'm talking master's, doctorate level degrees. Because like a genetic scientist, I have to be able to look at your genealogy. I need to be able to look at all the dots. I need to be able to look at that strand. And I need to be able to interpret what it is that we need to do next in order to ensure that you are meeting your goals. Orumila is that guiding light for the Bawalao. That is what makes Orumila special. Some things that I want to make sure that we understand. For those of the afro kuwano faith that understand the, the synchronization, that understand why it is that we do what we do, and the traditions of how we've gotten to his feast day being October 4th, we understand that we wake up at 4 a.m., we understand that we don't brush our teeth for nothing. We go straight to first you honor God, Olodumari. Moyumba Olodumari. I give tribute to Olodumari. And you work your way down that list. Because that's the first thing we always do. Second thing we do is that we give thanks to the Eguns. The Eguns, the spirits that have come before us, our ancestors. Okay? So I'm starting to give you a preview and a list of things to do on October 4th in order for you to give tribute to Orula. Again, maybe that you don't follow the Afro-Cubano faith, but you follow the traditional, and that's okay. Because at the end of the day, you don't necessarily need a day to give tribute to Orula, but you do need to understand these phases and why. 4 a.m. is the given time in our philosophy when all the divinities come down. It's the given time right before sunrise that we start to work on the things that we need to work. That's why we choose 4 a.m. We tell you don't brush your teeth because we need the essence of you. We need your inner bowels because your ori is not only here but your ori is also in your stomach. And we need to orula on the divinities and everybody needs to understand where you're coming from. <clears throat> also, what kind of offerings do we give? When we talk about Adi Moose, for Orula. We talk about things in pairs, things of twos. Why? Because the Olodums, when we talk about Baba Yolbe, all the way down to Baba Aregum, which is the 16 Mays, Mays means two, means pairs. That's why you light two candles. That's why we give two cocos, uh, two coconuts. That's why we give two yames, which is a, a root vegetable. We give them things in two. Now, when you do an Adimu and you start to cook something, right, um, of some sort, then we can get creative and there's a lot of different ways of doing that but one of the biggest things that I want you guys to understand is in a lot of different houses even in the Afro-Cubano faith October 4th is a day of feast and a day of thanks sometimes that is the day when you go to your godfather and you give him the two cocos, a white plate two candles, two yamas in order for him to tribute Typically, you get a consultation from your godfather that you schedule and you give him that derecho. You give him that, that whatever that amount is to charge for a consultation. You give him to that day and, you, and he starts to accumulate all these things so that he can build a feast for Orula. And then he'll knock out the consultations after the fact because that day is directed for Orumila. In other houses, you'll see where people use 
their Ifa birthday, so the day that they were born in Ifa, in order to give tribute, and that's when you do the consultations and the derechos and so forth. But it never, never, ever lose sight that you have to give thanks. And more importantly for everybody out there, and something that I think is always missed when we talk about these feast days, is that you always remember that there's a guardian angel, right? And we'll call it a guardian angel, guardian divinity, we'll call it an orisha, guardian orisha, or whatever. Everyone is a follower of an orisha that's going to dictate how things will flow for you. That's the person that's coming to bat for you. That's your right-hand man or woman or whatever you want to call that divinity. That's the person that's fighting for you. So don't ever forget to give thanks to that person as well in every feast day. For example, I'm Omo Chango. Chango will represent my head always, and Chango is always fighting to knock out all these barriers with me. Orula is nearly giving me what Ifa is saying in order for me to beat these challenges. But my guardian is always with me, always. My spirit guide is always with me, always. The Egungs are with me, always. So things to think about. <clears throat> Orumila. Things of two. If you're going to cook something, make it 8, 16. If it's, if it's the cornmeal balls, like a lot of people like to do, you make 8 of them or you make 16 of them. Orumila. We like to taste the food of Orumila because in Orumila, some patakis and certain odums talk about how Orula, people try to poison Orula. And always remember that it was Orula and Orula's constant battle when the universe was created that constantly kept consulting Ifa to figure out what the right needed to look like. And that's how Orula ended up with so many packs. And that's why Orula is who we look for, for spiritual enlightenment and spiritual direction. So with that said, give thanks to your Orula. Starting at 4 a.m., phase one, 4 a.m. Don't brush your teeth, come down, give thanks to God and all the divinities. Lay down a straw mat, bring down your Orula, bring down your Osu next to your Orula. <clears throat> Once you're done with that, I want you to give thanks to Orula. Iburu Orula, Iboya Orula, Ibucheche Orula. I want you to light the two candles. Number two. And I want you to follow the direction of your house on how to intend those inquines and that ota that rocked us in there. And I want to make sure that you are giving him the proper time, effort, and understanding. Give your his receive his ache by giving your time. Your sacrifice, your a bull. With that said, my farafum, orula, mufurubale, to all the godfathers out there that birth your orulas, because that's why you go to their houses. That's why you call them when you say mufurubale ifa, because you're giving thanks to orula that birthed your orula. With that said, iburu, iboya, ibucheche. That's just icing on the cake. There's a lot to cover, but don't want to prolong this more. Gave you a couple of steps of things to do. Okay? If not, go to your godfather's house. Bring him a white plate, two coconuts, two yamas, two candles. A derecho, whatever he charges for a console. Parino, iburu boya bucheche. Thank you for the guidance thus far. Mufur bale ifa. Your ifa who birthed my ifa. My yorula who birthed my yorula. With that said, hopefully that clears up some things. Iburu, Iboya, Abucheche, give me a couple of likes, give me a share, leave me some comments, shoot me an email. La Regla de Ifa, L A dot R E G L A dot D E dot I F A at gmail.com. La dot Regla dot De dot Ifa at gmail.com. With that said, Cyberland, Iburu, Iboya, Abucheche.